right? Because there's a lot of people who've been told their whole life they could do anything they want, they could accomplish anything they want, and then they go out and start a business. Nine out of 10 businesses fail. Hello and welcome to McGraw Some Sauce, the podcast all about helping entrepreneurs level up to become awesome. My name is Nick McGraw. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Today, my guest is Jason Portnoy. Jason runs his own marketing agency called Jport Media in Montreal, just down the street from me here in Toronto. And what I like about Jason is his super strong social media presence, particularly on Instagram. He's always giving out really helpful advice to entrepreneurs like starting a podcast to grow your business or dealing with imposter syndrome. He's always breaking things down in really easy to understand bite-sized pieces. So if you're ready to learn, let's talk to Jason Portnoy. Jason Portnoy, all the way from Montreal, the center of the universe. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm obviously talking to you from Toronto, which is, I guess, the second center of the universe, down the street from the center of the universe. Um, I know that we all have to, to you know, like pay respect to the real center of the universe, which is uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Isn't that true, Jason? I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So I, <laughs> before, we start, before we start getting into the rivalry, I got, I, I got to thank you. But, but yeah, I guess depends who you ask. If you ask Montrealers, definitely we're, we're the center. If you ask Torontonians, uh, they'll, they'll tell you they're the center. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, you know what, man? I uh, like I said, I'm 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 talking to you from Toronto, I, and I've been to Montreal a bunch of times. I love it there. I love the city there. The food is amazing. The people are great. You have a much better transit system than we do. It's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reliable. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, and um, yeah, man, it's just uh, it's actually a great it's a great city to be from. It's a great city to visit. It's a great city to get, have a good time. Uh, and I'm, I just hope Elon Musk can um, uh, build the hyperloop that I so desperately want between Toronto and Montreal, because I'm tired I of this agree. five and a half hour drive to you, man. I want to hop on a hyperloop and in 45 minutes, I want to get come see you. Amen. I agree. I agree. Put me in that vacuum tube, shoot me to Montreal, <laughs> shoot me to the Bell Center, and we'll go see the Leafs versus the Habs. What do you think? Look, when, when hockey's back and we're out of this lockdown, anytime you come here, my pleasure, we'll go to a game together. Uh, okay. It's a date. It's a date, Jason. It's a, it's a date. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here with me today, man. As you know, this is um, a talk all about entrepreneurship, growth mindset, entrepreneurial insight. And I can think of no, no one better that I want to talk to uh, than Jason Portnoy of Jport Media, who helps other entrepreneurs build their businesses and build their brands. I know you're heavily into branding and marketing, and you have a ton of insight with that stuff. But before we get into all of that, I want to talk about sort of how we've met and how I've sort of stumbled into your life um, in a really, really good way. Um, and that is your, the content that you put out specifically on Instagram, which I love. I'm such a fan of what you do. I think it's um, the videos you put out and the message you, 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 um, you put out there for people and the golden nuggets that you drop all the time. I think it's real. I think it's authentic. I think it's like super on point. And every video I've ever seen from you, every reel, I'm like, that makes sense. That makes sense too. I love that you put out this free advice and I kind of want to know why you do it. I know why I love it, but I want to ask you, why do you put out the free advice? Why are you talking to entrepreneurs? Um, and why do you think it's important to get these messages and these gems out there? I mean, first of all, that's probably the most flattering thing someone could hear when they're putting out content is that another person uh, appreciates the content and actually likes it and consumes it. So thank you for that. That, that actually means a lot, believe it or not. Um, it, it try, like, um, sincerely that, that does mean a lot. Um, why do I do it? Um, uh, I mean, there's definitely, I don't want to be altruistic. I don't want to pretend that it's all to help people. Look, content helps get my brand name noticed mm -hmm. and me getting noticed helps me build my business. Right. So there is, there is that component to it. There definitely is a selfish play. I don't, I don't want to be one of those people that come on and be like, just want to give back. So all I want to do is, <laughs> is, is, is give back. Um, so part of it is building out my brand because if I build a brand by helping other people. Um, so again, not build a brand for the sake of having a brand, but build a brand because you helped other people um, or as a byproduct of helping other people, that's a very rewarding thing. 
because then you hit, you hit two things. You serve, serve two purposes. You're actually helping people and you're building your name up and it's a win-win for, and it's a win-win for everyone. The more people who know about me, the more people who could potentially work with my agency could hire me could go through our program, whatever it is that helps us. The other side of it is, um, man, I hate, um, the digital marketing space. I hate, uh, internet gurus. I hate what I hate, what it's become. Um, I think it's, you know, as someone who went through it with very, uh, I guess, blind, uh, naive, uh, point of view when I first got started and I didn't start a, a media, a, a media company because a social media agency, because it was cool. I stumbled into this role and, 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 and it worked and, and, and I pivoted and, and I worked with it. Um, so, you know, I came into it and thinking that everyone was, was gold. Every time someone came on there and, 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 and preached something that was gospel and, and these people became my heroes. And then you slowly meet your heroes and you realize they're not heroes at all. Um, I just think so many people glamorize entrepreneurship. Um, I don't think people realize just how hard it is. Um, I'm nowhere near where I want to be in my game to, so to speak down and be like, Oh, once you get to this level, it's this, I'm, I'm just like everyone else hustling along and trying and trying to make my way and, and do things. But I can tell you that what people glamorize as entrepreneurship is not entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I built a pretty successful agency. I'm pretty happy. I got way more room to grow. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not, not at the top of my game yet. Uh, but at the same time, man, it's hard. It's a lonely journey. It's hard. You can have all the friends in the world, uh, but only entrepreneurs understand what you're going through. And if we're not being real with each other, we're not having honest conversations where we could help one another and get through this, then man, that journey becomes uh, a lot harder and a lot more lonely. Um, and I, I guess I, I do it as a way to connect with people. And if I could spit my truth and I could talk about what entrepreneurship really means to me and that connects with you, well then great. If you need to see pictures of a yacht and models and a private jet, um, <laughs> then you're, then you're in for a rude, rude awakening when you actually start your business. You know what, uh, you know what my yacht and my models are? Uh, a lot of uh, ramen and craft dinner nights. Um, not because I particularly like a college dorm diet, but because it's quick and dirty and I can just put it in me and keep going. Um, and I love that you, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said. And it's all, it's all super on point. It's super wisdom packed. Um, but one of the things that you just laid down was um, people tend to glamorize entrepreneurship. And I think that there's, there is this romantic view of the hustle and grind lifestyle, the hustle and flow, right? Working 12, 13 hour days, spinning all the plates, being busy with the illusion that you're productive, right? You show up on social media here, you show up there, you do a live, you send out those emails, right? Being busy and being productive are not the same thing, but all of it looks like it's this romantic view to people who are not entrepreneurs, right? Um, and they don't know the behind the scenes. I'm sure this is a loaded question and I'm sure that it has multiple answers, but why do you think that entrepreneurship and the idea of, of making that transition to be an entrepreneur, why is this so romanticized? I'm sure it's, you know, there's massive, you know, gaps in time, right? Generation to generation to generation, our parents' generation, all that stuff. They, they, they had the same things. Why do you think entrepreneurship or the idea of, of, of being an entrepreneur for the rest of your life, why is this romanticized so much? Why is it so much sex appeal to be busy, but not really be productive? This hustle and grind, rise and grind lifestyle. Why is this so heavily romanticized? Again, I think it's from what other people are putting out there. So um, look, I'm not the poster boy for a 24 seven hustle. I like my work life balance as much as I could get. I like being with my family. Um, you know, I work hard when I need to work hard in order to have that freedom and, and, and do those things. That's why right. I do it, right? I do it so I could have those, those breaks and, and choose the life that I want and, and live my life on my own terms. Um, that comes with a cost, right? The days you take off are, you can't look at it and be like, oh, it's a day off. I'll just count it as a sick day and walk away. No, like you're still an operator of a business. Yeah. 
But in terms of why it's romanticized, look, there's no barrier to entry. People watch Shark Tank and then they think they could go start a business. People watch someone post something on social media that they started, a, you know, a drop shipping company and they're making millions of dollars and now they're on a jet. And now they're on this and people go in and do it. Um, you know, something Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about is and, and not enough, in my opinion, is the suicide rate amongst entrepreneurs, right? Because there's a lot of people who've been told their whole life they could do anything they want. They could accomplish anything they want. And then they go out and start a business. Nine out of 10 businesses fail right? That's something that's not thrown around on all these Instagram, right? Like, like you're not seeing, you're not seeing the, the, the nine different businesses that failed when that one guy hit that one that worked, right? right? You're, like there, that story is not being told. It's, I just started a business and I'm making millions and millions of dollars. Can it happen? Absolutely. Do we live in an age where that's way easier than it was before? Absolutely. But I think, if you're going to start an entrepreneur thinking that it's just like Shark Tank, I'm going to go start a business. I'm going to make millions of dollars appear and someone's going to hand me a check and I'm going to get a buyout. I mean, man, you're delusional. It's, it's just, it's not, re it's not realistic. That's not how it works. Nine out of 10 business fail. This is a hard game, right? Like, honestly, there are some days I wake up and I'm like, man, I should just go get a job. Nine to five sounds <laughs> way better. I clock in, I clock out, I go home. It's not on my mind anymore. I go to sleep with a clean with a clean mind, I focus on weekends or focus entirely on family and whatever I want to do. And then Monday, I can complain and bitch about Monday and go back and go back to work and start the whole process all over again. Entrepreneurs, their brains don't shut off. My brain doesn't shut off at night. My brain doesn't shut off on the weekends. There is, I don't know the difference between a Monday and a Friday and a, and a Saturday and a Sunday. That's, that's the truth. Now, that's not talked a lot about, but because there's no barrier of entry, because anyone in could go out and start their own business tomorrow. Everyone then thinks it's easy. Put a barrier of entry like a lawyer or a doctor and see how many people actually want to go through entrepreneurship. Again, just a ton, a ton of experience coming out of you. And uh, I think really, really um, just wisdom coming. Is it like but, but I, 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 I want to be very, very transparent. I'm nowhere near the top of my game. I'm not this, this billionaire coming in and, and talking to you. So I, I don't ever want it to sound like that. I'm going through these, these pain points as we speak. I'm going through scaling a business as we speak. I'm going through all these emotional uh, decision-making as we speak. So I, I don't ever want it to feel like, oh man, this guy built this business and now he's talking down. I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be or where I think I should be. Well, that doesn't sound like someone from Montreal to me, Jason. Maybe we need to hype you up a bit more. <laughs> maybe, maybe we need to like, maybe we need to like put more helium in that bubble of yours and help you float. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm self-aware, right? That's one thing I am. And right. I, I, and I'm not, I'm not comfortable. I, I, I always want more. I want to grow more. Uh, I want to help more. I want to do more. Um, and if I did that, if I didn't want to do that, and I mean, like, that's just comfort. And that's, that's even, that's even scarier. That's an even scarier life living in comfort and stagnation. You mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk, and it's hard to talk about entrepreneurship for the last decade. And his name doesn't come up in conversation somewhere. Um, he's, he's, he's sort of like the godfather of entrepreneurs right now. Um, go ahead. Gary, if you're listening, you can go ahead and trademark that if you like. Um, another person who's very much in the entrepreneurial space, but different from him is Simon Sinek. And I'm sure you're a big fan of him as well. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the events he once went to was um, early, early days of his brand, of him building up his brand. Um, well, uh, well, I think before even Start With Why came out. He was at a, probably a TED talk or some sort of conference where he's talking to a room full of business leaders and CEOs. And he said, show of hands, how many of you achieved your financial goals this year? Almost everyone's hand shot up. He then followed that up with, okay, keep your hands up. Uh, how many of you feel successful? Almost all their hands went down because they're never done growing. Right. It's not, it's not about the money that they made. It's, the, it's about the money that they're going to make. And it's hardly about money to these people anymore. It's about, okay, well, we made that much. If we're measuring success in dollars, 
That's the amount of success we have in the bank. How much more can we do? It's not even about spending it to them. They just want to see what they can go to next. They want to see where they can build next. They want to see what, what other things they can capture and acquire, right? It's just about growth, 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 and building an empire, right? It's, it's hardly about a rich luxury lifestyle. You see a lot of these entrepreneurs, any, anyone who is a millionaire has a financial advisor and an accountant or a lawyer who's right there in their corner. And they'll tell you, do you know why millionaires stay millionaires? Because they don't buy stupid shit like jets and yachts and gold chains and things like that. They live very regular, economically sound lives and they keep building and they keep growing, right? They always have an eye on the future. It's great to live in the present. You talked about work-life balance, but we also, as entrepreneurs, we're, we're sort of living in the future. I know that's that's probably not talked about either. You know, they, they see the present on social media, everyone who wants to jump in and, and, and go on Shark Tank, like you talked about, everyone who has this, this uh, rose tinted glasses look to entrepreneurship, they see how beautiful it is to live in the present. And you don't understand that we're almost always living a little bit in the future because we're always trying to grow. We always are trying to hit our goals. When we hit those goals, what are some new goals, right? This is a very untalked about part of entrepreneurship. Um, and I do think more people you know, probably need to be educated about it. And I think that's why you're doing such a good job with the message that you put out there. Uh, I agree. Um, look, uh, money is, is a scorecard, right? Everyone talks about yeah. money because it's a scorecard, right? How do you measure mm -hmm. success? I'd be lying to you if I didn't say money was important to me and a, and a driving motivation. I, and, and it should be to almost everyone because money helps them live the life that they want. And you could do a lot of good things with money, right? Uh, it doesn't mean you have to buy really nice stuff or really, or toys or whatever it is. If you want to buy toys and you can afford it, great. But you could also do a lot of good things with money. Something that, that people don't talk enough about is happiness as a scorecard. Um, and this sounds super cheesy. And I'll be honest, if you, we had this conversation a year ago, I would have sat there and said, okay, I, I'll, I'll be a little bit less unhappy with, with more money. Right. Right. And, and you hear like the top mind, you hear Simon Sinek, you hear Gary Vaynerchuk, you hear those people always talk about happiness and living life on your terms of, of, of and measure and using happiness as a scorecard. It's slowly starting to hit me as I get older. Um, and as you know, I have two little kids and as I start seeing that, and as I start, you know, wondering about their future, they're very young. And, and obviously I start thinking about that and, and what my legacy will be to them and how are they going to view me and all these different things and, and family becomes a focus and all your priorities change a little bit. Happiness is like, I mean, I walked away from a clothing company that I owned because I wasn't happy anymore. Right? Like that's the definition of really choosing happiness, but it's easy to connect the dots backwards and say, it's because I was unhappy. Now I know for sure I walked away because I was unhappy. And I know that I would walk away from this business right now, no matter how successful, if, if I was unhappy. Um, but I think people don't use that as a scorecard enough. And, and, and I think the reason being is I don't think people get to a level of, of just real um, self maturity to realize just how important happiness is. And again, I'm this is like so new to me, like I'm slowly starting to see just how important your own happiness is, especially like, you know, we're in Canada, right? The lockdown here is, is tough. Like I'm in Montreal where we have a curfew, like, like it's tough. You spend a year not being able to go anywhere, travel or do anything. Uh, you know, you're working from home, you go from work mode to dad mode to, to work mode. Happiness has to play a role. Otherwise everything becomes off balance. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm starting to, everything that Gary said and Simon, all the leaders who talk about happiness is starting to hit me a lot more this year, more than any other year. I'm lucky that I, um, I have a client who is, um, not quite a psychologist, but I think therapist is closer to what she does. She has her, um, a couple of master's degrees in, in science and, um, the human mind and things like that. I don't quite know what her, her, her actual title is, but I'm lucky in that I'm so close to her. I get to create her content. I help her make her content and all the videos that she puts out, she put out one recently about self-care. Um, and 
that there are this concept and she works with all her new clients. She works with high level executives to help them find this balance that you're talking about, you know, going from work mode to dad mode to work mode. These, these high level executives, these CEO types, they have no balance. They have no idea what it is uh, to work the 14 hours and then come home and, and turn it off and switch to a different mode. So she works with them to try to find this balance. And in the work that she does, there's two circles. The first circle inside is everything you can control, your self care. Uh, did you brush your teeth today? What did you put in your body as food? What kind of clothes you're wearing? These are all things that you can control. Everything outside of that is how much traffic there is on the road today on the way to work. Well, that's outside of your control, right? Um, is the elevator in the building working? That's also outside of your control. Is it going to rain outside of your control? But what's inside of your control, your self-care, your sleep schedule, hopefully that's within your control. Um, maybe when you have two little kids at home, it's not Jason, I can't speak to, <laughs> I can't speak to new fatherhood, but, but there's a lot of stuff within your control that you have complete dominion over. And when your life feels like it's derailing, it's because the stuff inside this little circle, you have lost control of it. You haven't prioritized this, or it hasn't had your attention at all in a long time. So you like your relationships, uh, again, your self-care, your sleep, the food you put in your body, the, the music you choose to listen to. Um, this is all for you. And when you have this out of alignment, the whole world feels like it's pressing in on you, right? You can let go of the traffic. You can let go on the of the weather. You can let go of someone freaking out uh, uh, at you at work or something like that. That's outside of your control. But when when you let slip the things that are in your control, that's when you feel pressed um, and you and you suffer more greatly. Um, and I think that's, that's something that's, that's never talked about in, in any field, not just entrepreneurship, in any industry. Um, and, and I love the fact that this is now, you know, um, mental illness and self-care and things like that are so mainstream. We cannot separate our work life from, from self-care life from mental health life and home life. Like it's all interconnected now. One is not, oh, I'll work on my self-care on Saturday between two and three. No, 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 no. This is every minute of every day. Um, and it's how you see the world. And um, and it's 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 the lens at, at which you look at, you look through when you look at the world, right? Um, this defines who you are. And I'm so glad that these things are now massive talking points in society, um, especially in, in, in the first world. Um, where we get to take these things more seriously and and they are improvements in our lives. I mean, I, I think you, you, you hit on two very important things, right? So number one, there's also your reaction to things out of your control is, is an important thing. How you choose to react to things, uh, you know, says a lot about who you are as a person. Um, but look at any business, like let's take marketing, for example, right? We, we do a lot of paid media for people. So you could complain rising costs of impressions or advertising or, or advertising costs growing up out of your control in your control is fixing your conversion rate on your website in yeah. your control is, is the copy in your control is the creative, but everyone, it, it's not just a life thing. It's it, that's how people view their business too. They always choose to fight the fight. That's the hardest mm -hmm. because it's a lot easier to deflect and not look internally. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and when it even that's when it comes to yourself and when it comes to business, right? It, it's just, it's an emotional response. So when, in the beginning, when clients would do this, it would, it would strike me as a little bit weird, like, man, you don't want to fix your website. But now as, as you, you, you go through this business, it's an internal thing. It's very easy. I'm paying money and I'm hiring you. You fix this issue. Yeah. It's a you thing because I don't want to, I don't want to examine myself. I'm scared to look at myself in the mirror and see what's really looking back at me. And people need to take that approach both in life and in business. And I'm telling you, there'd be a lot, they'd, they'd grow a lot more. How do you have those conversations with your clients? Um, very I have, <laughs> No, look, I'm a very transparent person. Um, I'm very honest with, with the clients that, that I have conversations with. Now I have uh, media buyers who have conversations with clients because I'm too direct. but <laughs> even in coaching, you know, you can't be afraid to get fired, right? Like that, like that's, that's a truth. It's, I tell clients what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. 
Mm. And because at the end of the day, my results, like I'm judged on results. Mm -hmm. So, and I also don't like headaches. I don't like dealing back and forth and fighting over things. So data doesn't lie. Numbers don't lie. When I pull up and I show you that, you know, you're blaming traffic because that's the first thing anyone ever does when something doesn't work is blame traffic. And most people don't have a traffic problem. They have a lack of um, sales offer or lack of conversion uh, yeah. pr problem. But every time they point that up, I'm like, cool, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the data. And then data will always say like, you know, you're telling me that the website, that the traffic we're sending you, your website's converting at a 0.5%, right? But it's a traffic but the traffic we're sending you is converting at a 1.3%. So what, like we could see, like we could really break down where people are coming from. So if you're mm -hmm. hiring us for Facebook ads, for example, and we're saying they're converting at 1.3%, but your website converts at a 0.5%. Well, guess what? Not the traffic. No, we're winning. Right? Yeah, we're winning there. <laughs> yeah, like we're winning, right? We're getting you your... Four X return, right? Like, that's right. like you're really going to blame the traffic that's getting you a four X. Like let's, let's have honest conversations. Let, let's, let's really look at the numbers. Um, nothing we ever have conversation. We have with clients are just random thoughts in our head. Um, we say something because we believe it, but then the day I'll always look at the client and be like, this is what we're telling you. This is what we see. At the end of the day, we work for you. So you make the final call. There is a bit of a, um, coaching slash mentorship role that you take on when you talk to your clients. I do the same thing, albeit we have very different people that we work with and different people that we serve, but you know, they're looking to you as the expert, you know, and they're looking to you for guidance, right? That's another thing that's not talked about in the design world, in the marketing world, right? Uh, young designers, uh, and, and, and I guess young marketers, young entrepreneurs, young social media mavens, um, you know, I, I often tell people, Jason, that I'm a great designer. Nobody told me in design school that I would have to play the role of part-time therapist. I did not sign up for that when, <laughs> when the day I graduated. Uh, I, I, I really didn't sign up to hear people's problems, get to know their lives, um, and, uh, you know, what makes them tick, what are their thoughts, what are their fears, what are their pain points, and what are their objections? You mentioned in a very real sense, well, the traffic, and I want to deflect my problems, my shortcomings, I want to blame it on something else. It's clearly the work you're doing that's not working. I don't want to have to do anything for me. That's why I'm paying someone else to fix my world for me, to fix my problems. But, um, you know, I love the fact that you have these very real, sometimes hard conversations, um, because, um, you know, it comes back to a level of trust too. They're trusting an expert. They're putting their faith in an expert. They're putting their faith in a pro. Um, and really, they no one will come out and say that they they need the guidance. They may come out and say they want guidance, but no one ever wants to admit where their shortcomings are, where their blind spots are. Maybe they can't even see them. That's why they're blind spots. But um, it's also part of our, our role to be a mentor, be a coach, be a friend, right? Where, where you think it's appropriate for some of your clients. And that's something that's not talked about either. We're in a, we're in a world of relationship building. The, the relationship's got to come first, right? Results have to come first. You could have the best relationship with someone. And if you're losing them tons of money and you're not getting them results, it doesn't matter what, what your relationship is, you're getting fired. <laughs> doesn't matter so, if you're best friends then. Re re results come first, then, then relationships. But I, but I agree with you. Um, but look, I, it's weird that you don't take on that role. I mean, I'm very empathetic to the fact when someone gives me money, right? They're investing in me to help them grow their business. Right. I, I, I know what it's like to sit across the table and write someone a check, right? We're not talking about uh, Coca-Cola writing a check for $10,000, right? Like, which yeah, if you lose it, I don't care. But these people are trusting you, um, you know, especially if you're starting off right? Let's, let's listen to the entrepreneur just starting off right there. And you're looking for your first client and they charge you and they give you money, man, that's such a, like a powerful thing there. Like if you just break it down and think about it, like this person's trust me with thousands of dollars, they're giving me thousands of dollars. Like they don't have, they may not have it. Like, like that's a different issue. Like whether you should take them on as a client or not, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, I'm very empathetic to whether someone gives us a dollar or someone gives us a hundred thousand dollars makes like right. it's, it's, it's this, it's, 
it's relative to where to where they're at and the money means the same to them usually um but like i think if people took on that approach a little bit more and sat there and said these people are paying me, you'll take a step back and and do and and do it now i'm very guilty of of getting annoyed very quickly and and just being like like i i just like at the end of the day you hired us so you'd be crazy not to listen to us so just like go with it that's my mentality so you hire people who are nicer to people than you right and 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 and, and plug and plug them in and have the conversations um but at the end of the day you know you're in the business of solving people's needs and problems like that's every single business in the world you solve a need or a problem well sometimes they need their hand help sometimes they need you to hug them tight and tell them it's going to be okay <laughs> right like and 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 that's that's life and that and that's the nature of entrepreneurship and and i mean i i, I people who don't do that they won't be in business very long and that's empathy 101 right like that's just that's just the hand holding or the hugging that you talk yeah, about but most that's... people don't have most people don't have empathy and and especially from a business sense right like people are people could be empathetic to other human beings but when it comes to the work dynamic I mean, and look, this goes two ways, right? It's not just you towards a client. Sometimes clients aren't empathetic to, look, Black Friday, media buyers are stressed out, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you ever hire an agency during Black Friday and they do a great job, maybe you should tell them that they did a nice job. You know, everyone likes a pat on the back. Everyone likes to be like, oh man, you've been stressed out. Why don't we cancel our call this week? There's empathy that goes on both sides, right? Just because you know you're a client doesn't mean you have the right to to do certain things, and we'll fire mm -hmm. clients if 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 they're rude or or they do things like it's it's just about fit, right? I care about people being happy here, um, so I, I think it's I think it's both ways. I, I think empathy uh, is very different in in real life. I think most people should be empathetic to other human beings, uh, but when that work dynamic is put into place, I think that's where people lose it a little bit, and and I and and I think it's. I'm, I want to be very clear about this. We need to be empathetic towards our clients, but you as a client need to be empathetic to the people you hire. And that's including Nick. If you hire him as a designer and, and he does, and, he, and he's working hard and he's scrapping and you, and you don't like the stuff and you're, and you're making him work late hours or whatever it is, man, just thank you. Thank you goes a long way. I love that. Um, it would just be a nice, simple dose of reality for everybody. Just not just not just the real world and not just the business world. in every part of your world. Just a, a thank you acknowledgement. Right. Um, you know, I was raised to like hold the door open for people and, you know, help them out where, where, where they need it, where I can. Right. Uh, just a simple thank you. You'd be surprised how how just acknowledge because that's it's, it's less about the act that you did and more, oh, you acknowledge that I even exist. Oh, okay, that's great. Like it just puts people on cloud nine for, for a little bit, right? You, you're you under the impression that you've leveled up and you've come a long way because you you, you have empathy in your life. Like, you, like for sure, like it's been something that you've been able to tap into as a skill. Um, look, I, I was definitely raised right. My mother taught me great manners. Uh, I was, you know, in, in a house with two older sisters. So I was taught respect and manners and, and, you know, how, how to treat people. My mom made that very clear, um, you know, when she was raising, when she was raising us, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I, if, if I look back and sit there and say, my success has been because I'm an empathetic person. Um, you know, like I'm sure there are some clients that, that could tell you that, I wasn't so nice to them at certain times. Sure. Like, I mean, you'll, you'll always, you'll always have Are those that. the clients you fired anyways, Jason. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> you know, like, look at the same time, you can be empathetic, you'd be nice, but doesn't mean you you're going to be liked and loved by everyone. And doesn't mean you need to be liked and loved by everyone. You need to first learn to like and love yourself and then, and then figure out who you need to be around that need to like and love you too. Doesn't mean you have to be rude and disrespectful. Um, but it, you know, just to answer your question, I, I honestly don't know. I, I've never really, I've never really looked at empathy from a standpoint of has my, has any any success that I've ever had uh, been attributed to empathy? It's a good question. I, I I just I've never really tried to map that out. 
you know, I don't think I've ever asked anybody that either. I think this is a first for both of us. And I think um, it might be something that I ask myself in the future. Like if I want to grow as entrepreneurs do, as we both want to, right? We both have goals that we've achieved and want to still achieve. Um, is this going to play a massive role in, or any, even a small role? Uh, will it play a role of any sort of significance um, in building future relationships and maintaining the relationships that I have now? Um, for me, I think the answer is yes. Um, I think that's probably the word of the year for me. I've been working on empathy. If I've had a new year's resolution, it's, uh, it's to inject more of it into my life, not force it, but just be more understanding and turn on the listening a little bit more. Um, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll, I'll review at the end of the year if this worked. Um, and I guess I have also a lifetime to, uh, <laughs> to review if this is working, but, um, but I think it's a, it's a good move. I can speak for myself. I think it's a good move on my part. Um, I'm not naturally an empathetic person. So I think it's something I should work on um, if I want to grow, I want to develop as a person. Um, and I think if we were to bring this conversation back to entrepreneurship and back to growth mindset, um, I sort of want to ask you in terms of growth, um, what's... Well, first of all, I will say like most people have empathy, right? If you lack empathy... Sure. You're a sociopath, right? Like, so, and like, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the definitions of being a sociopath. So I wouldn't sell yourself short of being like, I'm not really good at empathy. everyone. Everyone has empathy, whether they, they deploy it at all times is a different, is a different story. But I, I I've, I've never really met a sociopath before. Um, I've, I've seen them on TV and in magazines, but I've never really met one before. So maybe you didn't know you were meeting one, Jason, oh, until it was too late. I'm not talking about me, but maybe fair, you fair come, enough. Come. I mean, I mean, we still got time left in this podcast for me to make that decision. <laughs> that'll be that'll be in the in the. Um, <laughs> but kidding. no, yeah, you're right. Everyone has empathy. Um, what level you have it to uh, completely depends on you and how you were yep. raised and the circumstances and all that. I think I'm just working on mine every day. Um, and I think it just makes me a, a better person, I guess, better business partner, um, um, to my clients, cause they're looking for that expertise and that help. I think it makes me a better other half of my relationship, better son, better brother. Um, and, uh, it's like you, if you asked, if I asked you a year ago, are you happy? Um, and if you asked me a year ago or even five years ago, is this, is this matter to you? I would have probably said no, but it's starting to matter a lot more. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you though, in terms of sure. growth and in terms of, um, something to aim for, what can I expect as a fan of your brand? As you know, I'm already a fan of what you're doing on social media. I'm a fan of, of paper media. What can I expect from Jason in the next little while in terms of your growth? What's, what's something you're working on? Do you have like a big idea? Um, is there something that you're aiming towards? Um, what can I expect as a fan who's going to continue consuming you and your brand? What can I look forward to? Um, just, uh, I'm going to keep putting out content. I'm going to keep trying to be as consistent as possible. Um, you know, from, from a work side of things, I'm launching a new program in April called the market domination method, which is really mm. uh, a 12 month coaching program on how to build your brand. Uh, handheld by me. Uh, there isn't an outsource team. This isn't a course. This isn't a bunch of videos you watch and now you know how to build a brand. This is uh, me uh, throughout the year, uh, you know, helping you build your brand in, in a group environment, um, which is something that came about because, you know, so many people aren't qualified to work with an agency, nor should they hire an agency. Uh, but everyone still deserves the right to build their brand and everyone deserves the right to get their message across to people um, and something I'm passionate about. And if you ask me where, you know, I think I'm a pretty good media buyer. I think I hired better people than me. Uh, but at the same time, uh, where I love is I could talk marketing strategies for hours. Um, so again, where happiness plays a role. Uh, when COVID first started, um, you know, and everything got shut down, I said I was going to do three free consulting calls for people who are now trying to figure out what to do and I was going to help them. Um, I ended up doing 15 of those calls. So I did 15 hours of those calls just because um, we've scaled multiple businesses from six to seven to eight figures. Um, and those calls were way more rewarding than that. 
you know, even if what, what I think is common sense, helping, helping someone decide what to do or how to pivot and just giving them that, that decision and watching their face and, and hopefully go out and execute after, but that's uh, again, in my control and out of my control. Right. Um, you know, so, but just seeing their face and, and, and knowing that I made a difference in helping way more rewarding than anything else. So I said, uh, when I started to realize that I was like, I got to do way more of these consulting and strategy things. And that's just not speaking at events. That's not just doing podcasts like this, but how do I really, um, you know, make a difference. And so that kind of led towards the market domination method program. When did the program launch? April 1st. Oh, coming up. We're recording this in the middle of March, but so, I, have to look forward to. so I mean, it's, it's evergreen, right? People could join in whenever they want. Um, Right. But we're going to take the first people through a pilot program, um, you know, just for the first couple of months and really just build that out. But then after that, it's, it's, it's evergreen. People can join whenever they want. And it's really, you know, you know, community of other entrepreneurs who are going through the same things where you can learn off them um, and one helping the other. And then all my resources, all my resources are available pretty much through this. That's incredible, man. It sounds, sounds really, really good. Um, and I look forward to like when you drop it, when you launch it, because I can tell that you're in a position to help people and that you want to help people. Um, and it's good that someone like you is out there helping up and coming entrepreneurs. I think that's huge. So um, Jason, if people wanted to, if people wanted to get in touch with you, make a connection with you, where do you hang out? Where do you live? How can people find you? Man, I'm everywhere. Like I try to be, you can, you can find me, you can find me on, on Instagram at Jason Portnoy. Uh, my website is jportnoy.com. Uh, you could email me jason at jportmedia.com. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty accessible. Um, I hope this wasn't too gloomy. Entrepreneurship, I, I, I want to end with this. Entrepreneurship is fun. Entrepreneurship is, is, is good. I don't want to just talk about the bad. There's a lot of good. It allowed me to live a life um, of my choosing. So as much as I don't want, as much as sometimes I said, I want to wake up and go get a nine to five. There's a reason I don't, I like my life a lot better this way. Um, the ups are really, really up and the downs are downs and you just have to learn to ride those waves. And if you can, and if you could build a business like that, I mean, and you need help, the market domination method will help you. But if you could do it on your own and, and you're able to do it and you're able to hire guys like Nick to help you brand and, 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 and turn your brand into something uh, beautiful, uh, and put your work out there to the world, then there is nothing more rewarding than that. And we're living in an era where it's amazing how much is possible that you could do with barely any resources. Like it's, it's amazing what, what you could do and the tools that are available if you choose to go on this adventure. And if you do, I hope you reach out to people like Nick. I hope you don't reach out to people like me. Um, you know, because it, it is, it is a fun ride. I, I don't want to make it sound like doom and gloom, um, but at the end of the day, I told you, I, I tell people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Nine out of 10 businesses fail. Um, it's a tough, tough sport, but it, I mean, if you could, if you could play, if you could, if you could pick up the ball and play, man, welcome. It's a, it's a, it's a, a beautiful world. Thank you, Jason, for everything, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah.